Welcome to Immerse Beginnings, reading for week 6, day 26. Immersed in Numbers The fourth book in Beginnings, Numbers, marks an important advance in Israel's story. The book begins with the Exodus generation, the people God freed from slavery in Egypt, but ends with the conquest generation, the people God will lead into the promised land. The Exodus generation isn't allowed to enter the land because of their lack of faith in God's power and their disobedience to His directions. This is one of many examples of Israel's disloyalty to their covenant with God. Numbers helps us understand that Israel suffered from the same flaw as all of humanity, rebellion and disobedience. If God is going to use Israel to bless all peoples, then he is also going to have to overcome this flaw within his own people. The literary structure of Numbers alternates back and forth between story and law, showing how these two elements of Israel's history are intertwined. Much of the nation's law is given on the way, because this is a people with a destiny. The law and story sections in Numbers have distinct characteristics, but their interrelated nature shows how God's presence and word are living among his people. Law sections begin with the Lord speaking to Moses, Aaron, or both. The laws given are typically to be kept in the future. When you finally settle in the land I am giving you. The account gives no description of how anyone obeyed or disobeyed the laws. No places and no people besides Moses and Aaron are named in these sections. They typically end with a standard phrase, such as, This is a permanent law for the people, or I am the Lord your God. Story sections are situated in place and time, and they name all who are involved. For example, in the first month of the year, the whole community of Israel arrived in the wilderness of Zin. People respond to the Lord either in obedience or disobedience, and subsequently receive the consequences. Stories often end by explaining how a place was named. For example, after that, the area was known as Tabera, which means the place of burning, because fire from the Lord had burned among them there. These different law and story sections and numbers relate to one another in intricate ways. Each law section is tied to the preceding story section. For example, at the end of the book's second story section, it is announced that when the cloud, signifying the Lord's presence, moves, the Israelites must break camp. The subsequent law section commands trumpets to be made to signal when this should happen. We also see in these sections the same kind of chiastic pattern we've already seen in Genesis and Exodus, the first item in a series paired with the last one, and so on. In Numbers, each of the six law sections are paired together, as are the six story sections. As it concludes, Numbers pulls together both strands, story and law, to show their inseparability in forming the identity of God's covenant people. It also brings the people to the edge of the promised land, the book does not just describe the journey, it also reveals the significance of what happens along the way. God's story with the world is moving forward, but as we are learning, it is not an easy journey. God will continuously wrestle with His people, and His own commitment to the covenant will be tested. However, as we read of the travels of Israel, we can see clear hints that the Lord's promise to bring blessing to Abraham's family will prevail. Note, for example, the words that God gives Moses for the high priest Aaron and his sons to share with the people of Israel as a special blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. These words begin with blessing and end with peace. While the Bible story is not a straightforward path to the fulfillment of God's intention, as there are ups and downs in the journey, he is faithful and true to his word, and his last word will be peace. The Book of Numbers A year after Israel's departure from Egypt, the Lord spoke to Moses in the tabernacle in the wilderness of Sinai. On the first day of the second month of that year, he said, from the whole community of Israel, record the names of all the warriors by their clans and families. List all the men twenty years old or older who are able to go to war. 
You and Aaron must register the troops, and you will be assisted by one family leader from each tribe. These are the tribes and the names of the leaders who will assist you. Reuben, Elizer, son of Shedeur. Simeon, Shalumiel, son of Zurashaddai. Judah, Nashan, son of Amminadab. Issachar, Nathanael, son of Zur. Zebulun, Eliab, son of Helan. Ephraim, son of Joseph. Elishima, son of Amihud. Manasseh, son of Joseph. Gamaliel, son of Padazar. Benjamin, Abidan, son of Gideoni. Dan, Ahiezer, son of Emishaddai. Asher, Pagiel, son of Akron. Gad, Eliasif, son of Duel. Naphtali, Ahira, son of Enan. These are the chosen leaders of the community, the leaders of their ancestral tribes, the heads of the clans of Israel. So Moses and Aaron called together these chosen leaders, and they assembled the whole community of Israel on that very day. All the people were registered according to their ancestry by their clans and families. The men of Israel who were twenty years old or older were listed one by one, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. So Moses recorded their names in the wilderness of Sinai. This is the number of men twenty years old or older who were able to go to war, as their names were listed in the records of their clans and families. Reuben, Jacob's oldest son, 46,500. Simeon, 59,300. Gad, 45,650. Judah, 74,600. Issachar, 54,400. Zebulun, 57,400. Ephraim, son of Joseph, 40,500. Manasseh, son of Joseph, 32,200. Benjamin, 35,400. Dan, 62,700. Asher, 41,500. Naphtali, 53,400. These were the men registered by Moses and Aaron and the twelve leaders of Israel, all listed according to their ancestral descent. They were registered by families, all the men of Israel who were twenty years old or older and able to go to war. The total number was 603,550. But this total did not include the Levites. For the Lord had said to Moses, Do not include the tribe of Levi in the registration. Do not count them with the rest of the Israelites. Put the Levites in charge of the tabernacle of the covenant along with all its furnishings and equipment. They must carry the tabernacle and all its furnishings as you travel, and they must take care of it and camp around it. Whenever it is time for the tabernacle to move, the Levites will take it down, and when it is time to stop, they will set it up again. But any unauthorized person who goes too near the tabernacle must be put to death. Each tribe of Israel will camp in a designated area with its own family banner, but the Levites will camp around the tabernacle of the covenant to protect the community of Israel from the Lord's anger. The Levites are responsible to stand guard around the tabernacle. So the Israelites did everything just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then the Lord gave these instructions to Moses and Aaron. When the Israelites set up camp, each tribe will be assigned its own area. The tribal divisions will camp beneath their family banners on all four sides of the tabernacle, but at some distance from it. The divisions of Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun are to camp toward the sunrise on the east side of the tabernacle beneath their family banners. These are the names of the tribes, their leaders, and the numbers of their registered troops. Judah, Nashan, son of Amminadab, 74,600. Issachar, Nathanael, son of Zur, 54,400. Zebulun, Eliab, son of Helan, 57,400.
So the total of all the troops on Judah's side of the camp is 186,400. These three tribes are to lead the way whenever the Israelites travel to a new campsite. The divisions of Reuben, Simeon, and Gad are to camp on the south side of the tabernacle beneath their family banners. These are the names of the tribes, their leaders, and the numbers of their registered troops. Reuben, Elizer, son of Shedeur, 46,500. Simeon, Shalumiel, son of Zurishaddai, 59,300. Gad, Eliasaph, son of Duel, 45,650. So the total of all the troops on Reuben's side of the camp is 151,450. These three tribes will be second in line whenever the Israelites travel. Then the tabernacle, carried by the Levites, will set out from the middle of the camp. All the tribes are to travel in the same order that they camp, each in position under the appropriate family banner. The divisions of Ephraim, Manasseh, and Benjamin are to camp on the west side of the tabernacle beneath their family banners. These are the names of the tribes, their leaders, and the numbers of their registered troops. Ephraim, Elishima, son of Amihud, 40,500. Manasseh, Gamaliel, son of Pedazer, 32,200. Benjamin, Abidan, son of Gideoni, 35,400. So the total of all the troops on Ephraim's side of the camp is 108,100. These three tribes will be third in line whenever the Israelites travel. The divisions of Dan, Asher, and Naphtali are to camp on the north side of the tabernacle beneath their family banners. These are the names of the tribes, their leaders, and the numbers of their registered troops. Dan, Ahiezer, son of Amishaddai, 62,700. Asher, Pagiel, son of Akron, 41,500. Naphtali, Ahira, son of Enan, 53,400. So the total of all the troops on Dan's side of the camp is 157,600. These three tribes will be last, marching under their banners whenever the Israelites travel. In summary, the troops of Israel listed by their families totaled 603,550. But, as the Lord had commanded, the Levites were not included in this registration. So the people of Israel did everything as the Lord had commanded Moses. Each clan and family set up camp and marched under their banners exactly as the Lord had instructed them. This is the family line of Aaron and Moses as it was recorded when the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai. The names of Aaron's sons were Nadab, the oldest, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These sons of Aaron were anointed and ordained to minister as priests. But Nadab and Abihu died in the Lord's presence in the wilderness of Sinai when they burned before the Lord the wrong kind of fire, different than he had commanded. Since they had no sons, this left only Eleazar and Ithamar to serve as priests with their father Aaron. Then the Lord said to Moses, Call forward the tribe of Levi, and present them to Aaron the priest, to serve as his assistants. They will serve Aaron and the whole community, performing their sacred duties in and around the tabernacle. They will also maintain all the furnishings of the sacred tent, serving in the tabernacle on behalf of all the Israelites. Assign the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They have been given from among all the people of Israel to serve as their assistants. Appoint Aaron and his sons to carry out the duties of the priesthood. But any unauthorized person who goes too near the sanctuary must be put to death. And the Lord said to Moses, Look, I have chosen the Levites from among the Israelites, to serve as substitutes for all the firstborn sons of the people of Israel. The Levites belong to me, for all the firstborn males are mine. On the day I struck down all the firstborn sons of the Egyptians, I set apart for myself all the firstborn in Israel, both of people and of animals. They are mine. I am the Lord. 
The Lord spoke again to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. He said, Record the names of the members of the tribe of Levi by their families and clans. List every male who is one month old or older. So Moses listed them, just as the Lord had commanded. Levi had three sons, whose names were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The clans descended from Gershon were named after two of his descendants, Libni and Shimei. The clans descended from Kohath were named after four of his descendants, Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. The clans descended from Merari were named after two of his descendants, Malai and Mushai. These were the Levite clans listed according to their family groups. The descendants of Gershon were composed of the clans descended from Libni and Shimei. There were 7,500 males, one month old or older, among these Gershonite clans. They were assigned the area to the west of the tabernacle for their camp. The leader of the Gershonite clans was Eliasaph, son of Lael. These two clans were responsible to care for the tabernacle, including the sacred tent with its layers of coverings, the curtain at its entrance, the curtains of the courtyard that surrounded the tabernacle and altar, the curtain at the courtyard entrance, the ropes, and all of the equipment related to their use. The descendants of Kohath were composed of the clans descended from Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. There were 8,600 males, one month old or older, among these Kohathite clans. They were responsible for the care of the sanctuary, and they were assigned the area south of the tabernacle for their camp. The leader of the Kohathite clans was Elizaphan, son of Uziel. These four clans were responsible for the care of the ark, the table, the lampstand, the altars, the various articles used in the sanctuary, the inner curtain, and all the equipment related to their use. Eliezer, son of Aaron, the priest, was the chief administrator over all the Levites, with special responsibility for the oversight of the sanctuary. The descendants of Merari were composed of the clans descended from Malai and Mushai. There were 6,200 males, one month old or older, among these Merari clans. They were assigned the area north of the tabernacle for their camp. The leader of the Merarite clans was Zuriel, son of Abihail. These two clans were responsible for the care of the frames supporting the tabernacle, the crossbars, the pillars, the bases, and all the equipment related to their use. They were also responsible for the posts of the courtyard and all their bases, pegs, and ropes. The area in front of the tabernacle, in the east, toward the sunrise, was reserved for the tents of Moses and of Aaron and his sons, who had the final responsibility for the sanctuary on behalf of the people of Israel. Anyone other than a priest or Levite who went too near the sanctuary was to be put to death. When Moses and Aaron counted the Levite clans at the Lord's command, the total number was 22,000 males, one month old or older. Then the Lord said to Moses, now count all the firstborn sons in Israel who were one month old or older, and make a list of their names. The Levites must be reserved for me as substitutes for the firstborn sons of Israel. I am the Lord. And the Levites' livestock must be reserved for me as substitutes for the firstborn livestock of the whole nation of Israel. So Moses counted the firstborn sons of the people of Israel, just as the Lord had commanded. The number of firstborn sons who were one month old or older was 22,273. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take the Levites as substitutes for the firstborn sons of the people of Israel, and take the livestock of the Levites as substitutes for the firstborn livestock of the people of Israel. The Levites belong to me. I am the Lord." There are 273 more firstborn sons of Israel than there are Levites. To redeem these extra firstborn sons, collect five pieces of silver for each of them, each piece weighing the same as the sanctuary shekel, which equals 20 geras. Give this silver to Aaron and his sons as the redemption price for the extra firstborn sons. 
So Moses collected the silver for redeeming the firstborn sons of Israel, who exceeded the number of Levites. He collected 1,365 pieces of silver on behalf of these firstborn sons of Israel, each piece weighing the same as the sanctuary shekel. And Moses gave the silver for the redemption to Aaron and his sons, just as the Lord had commanded. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Record the names of the members of the clans and families of the Kohathite division of the tribe of Levi. List all the men between the ages of thirty and fifty who are eligible to serve in the tabernacle. The duties of the Kohathites at the tabernacle will relate to the most sacred objects. When the camp moves, Aaron and his sons must enter the tabernacle first to take down the inner curtain and cover the Ark of the Covenant with it. Then they must cover the inner curtain with fine goatskin leather and spread over that a single piece of blue cloth. Finally, they must put the carrying poles of the Ark in place. Next, they must spread a blue cloth over the table where the bread of the presence is displayed, and on the cloth they will place the bowls, ladles, jars, pitchers, and the special bread. They must spread a scarlet cloth over all of this, and finally a covering of fine goatskin leather on top of the scarlet cloth. Then they must insert the carrying poles into the table. Next, they must cover the lampstand with a blue cloth, along with its lamps, lamp snuffers, trays, and special jars of olive oil. Then they must cover the lampstand and its accessories with fine goatskin leather and place the bundle on a carrying frame. Next, they must spread a blue cloth over the gold incense altar and cover this cloth with fine goatskin leather. Then they must attach the carrying poles to the altar. They must take all the remaining furnishings of the sanctuary and wrap them in a blue cloth, cover them with fine goatskin leather, and place them on the carrying frame. They must remove the ashes from the altar for sacrifices and cover the altar with a purple cloth. All the altar utensils, the fire pans, meat forks, shovels, basins, and all the containers, must be placed on the cloth, and a covering of fine goatskin leather must be spread over them. Finally, they must put the carrying poles in place. The camp will be ready to move when Aaron and his sons have finished covering the sanctuary and all the sacred articles. The Kohathites will come and carry these things to the next destination, but they must not touch the sacred objects, or they will die. So these are the things from the tabernacle that the Kohathites must carry. Eliezer, son of Aaron the priest, will be responsible for the oil of the lampstand, the fragrant incense, the daily grain offering, and the anointing oil. In fact, Eliezer will be responsible for the entire tabernacle and everything in it, including the sanctuary and its furnishings. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Do not let the Kohathite clans be destroyed from among the Levites. This is what you must do so they will live and not die when they approach the most sacred objects. Aaron and his sons must always go in with them and assign a specific duty or load to each person. The Kohathites must never enter the sanctuary to look at the sacred objects for even a moment, or they will die. And the Lord said to Moses, Record the names of the members of the clans and families of the Gershonite division of the tribe of Levi. List all the men between the ages of thirty and fifty who are eligible to serve in the tabernacle. These Gershonite clans will be responsible for general service and carrying loads. They must carry the curtains of the tabernacle, the tabernacle itself with its coverings, the outer covering of fine goatskin leather, and the curtain for the tabernacle entrance. They are also to carry the curtains for the courtyard walls that surround the tabernacle and altar, the curtain across the courtyard entrance, the ropes, and all the equipment related to their use. The Gershonites are responsible for all these items. Aaron and his sons will direct the Gershonites regarding all their duties, whether it involves moving the equipment or doing other work. They must assign the Gershonites responsibility for the loads they are to carry. So these are the duties assigned to the Gershonite clans at the tabernacle. 
They will be directly responsible to Ithamar, son of Aaron the priest. Now record the names of the members of the clans and families of the Merarite division of the tribe of Levi. List all the men between the ages of 30 and 50 who are eligible to serve in the tabernacle. Their only duty at the tabernacle will be to carry loads. They will carry the frames of the tabernacle, the crossbars, the posts, and the bases, also the posts for the courtyard walls with their bases, pegs, and ropes, and all the accessories and everything else related to their use. Assign the various loads to each man by name. So these are the duties of the Merarite clans at the tabernacle. They are directly responsible to Ithamar, son of Aaron the priest. So Moses, Aaron, and the other leaders of the community listed the members of the Kohathite division by their clans and families. The list included all the men between 30 and 50 years of age who were eligible for service in the tabernacle, and the total number came to 2,750. So this was the total of all those from the Kohathite clans who were eligible to serve at the tabernacle. Moses and Aaron listed them, just as the Lord had commanded through Moses. The Gershonite division was also listed by its clans and families. The list included all the men between 30 and 50 years of age who were eligible for service in the tabernacle, and the total number came to 2,630. So this was the total of all those from the Gershonite clans who were eligible to serve at the tabernacle. Moses and Aaron listed them, just as the Lord had commanded. The Merarite division was also listed by its clans and families. The list included all the men between 30 and 50 years of age who were eligible for service in the tabernacle, and the total number came to 3,200. So this was the total of all those from the Merarite clans who were eligible for service. Moses and Aaron listed them just as the Lord had commanded through Moses. So Moses, Aaron, and the leaders of Israel listed all the Levites by their clans and families. All the men between 30 and 50 years of age who were eligible for service in the tabernacle and for its transportation numbered 8,580. When their names were recorded, as the Lord had commanded through Moses, each man was assigned his task and told what to carry. And so the registration was completed, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. This concludes today's Immerse Reading Experience. Thank you for joining us.